Hello and welcome to Thursday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. And we've got a very interesting looking puzzle for you today. This is by Swarup Gugulam from India. Um, and it's called Threesome. Uh, not in the uh, suggestive sense, but in the three and then the word sum as in addition. Uh, and I think that's because, look, we've got all of these very short th length three arrow Sudoku clues in, 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 in the grid. And I'm told that this puzzle has a neat trick at the start. So uh, it's not often I'm given any sort of hints by our testers, but they think that it's worth pointing that one out in this case. So um, the, the pressure is on for me to spot some sort of trick, um, which which I quite like, actually. So we'll see how I get on with that in a, in a few minutes. Um, but a couple of things to mention first. If you watched yesterday's video, you may have been as perplexed as me uh, as to why Codec had called his puzzle the puffer fish. Well, I'm in debt to somebody called Rayanus, over on our Discord server because they explained the mystery and I can now explain it to you. So Rayan has coloured the grid. Um, you can see this is the grid here. He's coloured the cages. And I'm embarrassed to say that when I first saw this grid on the left, I still didn't know why it was called the puffer fish. I then needed this picture on the right, which does make it clear to me. So this bottom right ring here is the mouth of the puffer fish and the blue dots are the puffer fish's eyes, which I certainly didn't see beforehand. Um, but yeah, now I do. Now I feel a bit like I was being a bit daft before, but uh, my visualization skills for puffer fish are obviously subprime. Um, but yeah, very good. And thanks to Rayanus for pointing that out. What else have we got going on? Well, we've got our new Sudoku app out, of course. This is I mean, I mean, we've been absolutely thrilled by the feedback, not not amazed that so many of you are enjoying it because because we enjoyed testing the puzzles from that app so much. They are quite extraordinary. And if you have any love of Killer Sudoku at all, I cannot commend it to you highly enough. Um, what else? Well, on Patreon. Oh, actually, we've got another we've got another bonus for you on Patreon today. I forgot this. Mark. Mark has released um, a new puzzle he's just made today in response to actually some Discord discussion. Um, so Mark did a puzzle on the channel last night, which was a, I think it was a hybrid of Arrow Sudoku and XV Sudoku. And that, that led to some discussion we saw on, on Discord about what's the longest arrow you could possibly include in a puzzle. That got Mark thinking. And anyway, he's released, um, he's really, he's made a puzzle and it's, it's available for you guys on Patreon right now. So do have a look at it. I'm told it's approachable. No, I, I really am told it's not too bad. Um, and it should be a bit of fun. So have a look at that. And also, of course, um, I know a number of you have been studying for weeks now. Uh, this Sudoku puzzle hunt by Stefan Bura and Akash Jain. It is absolutely brilliant. It's called Tracking the Cryptid. Uh, lots and lots of linked Sudokus that all have to be solved in, in clever orders. And we are still getting correct entries being sent to us. So I'm going to say well done to Eric McLaughlin. Actually, uh, I should apologize to Eric because I think Eric solved the uh, the hunt a couple of days ago and I missed his email so I'm putting that right now well done Eric well done Rob SWS well done Aini Mikola who goes under the pseudonym Ainitsu on Discord and well done to Craig Smith all of you fantastic anyone who gets through that hunt can give themselves a serious pat on the back and know for sure that you are a very, very good Sudoku solver. Um, now let's get to the, onto the rules of the threesome that we're we're facing today. What we've got from Swaroop is normal Sudoku rules apply. Thank you for that. Uh, the sum of the digits along the path of each arrow must equal the digit in the circled cell. So completely standard arrow Sudoku rules. So let's look at let's look at that cell. So let's imagine this square was an eight. Now we would know that the cells on the arrow have to sum up to eight. So in this instance, they couldn't be one seven, they couldn't be two six. Those two squares would be three and five. And I, I can't see a, a reason that they couldn't be in either order. But that's basically how, how the rule works. Very straightforward. Normally in these puzzles, you get much longer arrows. So Swaroop has been a bit mean with the length of his arrows, but we have to spot a trick. Well, we don't have to spot it, but we're advised to spot a trick at the start. So that's what I'm going to study in a moment. Do have a go yourselves. The way to play, of course, is to click the link under the video. Now, with that, let's get cracking. Let's get trick spotting. Um, now, OK, so what I'm not going to do here, I'm just going to give myself 
a little bit longer than normal to have a look at. Well, the first thing that I can see, I can see I know the parity of this, this cell in row one. And that's, that's because if you've ever thought about a three cell arrow before, and I've probably spent far too much of my life thinking about a three cell arrow before, you always know the parity of a three cell arrow because whether the two, well, whether this is odd or even, obviously if it's odd, these two squares must add up to that odd number. So you have an odd number plus an odd number, which is an even number. Now, if these on the other, if this is even, these two have to add to an even number. So again, then you're adding two even numbers, which still gives you an even number. So any three cell arrow is always even. So those cells are even. Four and five, knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic, they sum to an odd number. Another knowledge bomb, I had somebody taking the mickey out of me about this on, on, on Twitter today. Uh, they sent me something suggesting I say this too often, but I'm going to say it again. If you look at a complete row of a Sudoku uh, and say we had the correct solution, what would we see in these nine cells here? Well, we'd see the digits one to nine. Now, what do the digits one to nine add up to? Well, they add up to 45. So if I know those are even and those are even and those are odd, what must this square be? Well, it must keep the parity. We need, we need the overall total to be odd. So that's, this cell here must be even. Um, and there you go, that's what I've spotted, um, which means it's two, two, six, or eight. Ah, no, I've got it. I've got the trick. And it's not that that's a five, that should be a six. Come back, that's a six. Now, look. Oh, this is very nice. Yeah, look, we've got the same, ex exactly the same pattern in row four, exactly the same pattern in row six, exactly the same pattern in row nine. What do I mean by exactly the same pattern? Well, we've got exactly two, two three cell arrows, two threesomes in each of these. Um, we've got an odd total for the givens in each of the rows. So we've got four even digits in the column, which basically means we now know that these are the four di the even digits in column five of the grid. That is lovely. That's absolutely lovely. I've never seen that before in an arrow Sudoku as sort of a an initial setup. Um, right, let's tidy up the arrows. That's not six, that's not four, that's not eight. Um, now, I presume that this... Ah, okay, well, I've spotted something else now. My trick spotting abilities are with me today. So the question I'm now thinking about is where nine goes in row one and row nine. Because one thing I know about Arrow Sudoku, with there's a, when there's a single digit total, is that you can never put nine on the arrow. So what, there must be a nine in one of those two cells, and there must be a nine in one of these two cells. Now that is an X-wing on nines. I'll color it just to confirm that it's an X-wing. What do I mean by an X-wing? Well, it means in row one, the nine must be in one of those two cells for sure. In row nine, the nine must be in one of those two cells. So in the finished solution, where I either see a nine here and a nine here, that's one possibility, or we'll see a nine here and a nine here, that's the other possibility. One of those two things must be true. And the crucial thing to note about that is that either way round, there was always a nine in exactly one of these two cells and always a nine in exactly one of these two cells, which means you can't put nine in any of those cells in the grid, which that may be useful. Um, I can't quite see why that is useful actually. So maybe that's not what we should be looking at. Um, just give me a second. Uh, ah, no, hang on, I've got a better, th well, I've got a different thought, which is where does nine go in box eight? Because we can't put nine ever on an arrow. So nine goes in one of those two cells. Can't put nine on an arrow. Ah, so nine. 
9 can't go on an arrow. Um, does that mean that... Ah, hang on a minute, hang on a minute. Ah, now this is, this is lovely. It's lovely setting this. Let's look at um, row 4 and row 6. And again, let's ask questions about nines. I think nines are the key digit here because in, um, in row six, where does the nine go? Well, it can't go on an arrow and it can't go in this square because this square is even. So we know nine is in one of those two squares. Well, now from the nines here, it can't be in that, that cell. So nine's got to be here. But I think we can repeat this maybe on row four of the grid by asking the same question. Where does nine go? And maybe we can't. I think, well, it's definitely in one of those two cells. I feel like I should know which of those two cells it's in. But maybe I, maybe I don't. Maybe I've just got to... Ah, no. I don't want to look at that yet. I want to keep looking at this one because I've still got to put a digit into this square. And this square can't be 9 or 8. And I can see it can't be 6. Why can't it be 6? Well, if it's 6, um, there's no way of making this, this domino add to 6 because 1, 5 is impossible and 2, 4 is impossible. So can it... It can't be 3 because that would be 1, 2. It can't be 4 because that's gone. So can it be 5 with 2, 3? No, that's beautiful. It can't be 5 with 2, 3. Let me show you why. If that's 5 and these two digits are 2, 3, let's just say they're in that order for the sake of exposition. What on earth do we put on in this domino to add up to 9? You can't use a 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5. So the minimum these two cells could be would be 6 and 7, which, a knowledge bomb from cracking the cryptic, add up to more than 9. So this is nonsense. This is definitely not 5, so this has to be 7. Um, now that might constrain the 9 now. That can't be 1, 8, 4, 5 or 2, 7. Yes, it does. This is 3, 6, which we know the order of from this 3. That means that's not 6. This has to add up to 7 without being 1, 6, or 3, 4. So that's 2, 5, we know the order. That means this is 8. Let's get rid of the 8s in the column, oopsie, in column 5. Okay. So have we, have we cracked the puzzle now? That's the question. Yeah, the answer's probably not, but I sort of feel like this is definitely a good start. Um, so one's got to appear in one of these cells. That's just Sudoku. Six has got to appear in one of those cells by Sudoku. I've still got this question about which of these is a nine. In fact, that cell is interesting because if that, oh, this, this square is forced, in fact, what on earth is in this arrow? Because it can't be five, six, seven, or eight. And it can't be four or anything lower than that because that will require a one and the domino in, in, in the sum. So this must be nine. Now these squares have to add up to nine without being one, eight, three, six, or four, five. So these are two and seven, there's a seven here. Seven and two go in, four goes in here. Now these squares are three, five, and eight. Well, which, which square are we gonna put in the, the arrow then? It's gonna to have to be the eight, that's a five. This is a three. Five is in one of those two squares. I've not used the X-wing at all, I don't think, um, but it's still a nice thing to notice. Five's, oh, where does five go? Sorry, in box eight, this has been sitting there ever since I put that five in, which was only just a moment ago, so don't give me a hard time. It must go there. So this square's got to be higher than five, and it can't be seven or eight, so it's got to be six or nine which means this square has to be one or four, which 
Presumably we there might be a way of knowing that. I can see 4 is locked into one of those two squares. I can see 7 is locked onto the arrow here, look. So this square has to be an 8 or a 9. Whoopsie. Um, misclicked again. This can't possibly be a 4 then. Because 4 and 7 add up to, yep, 11. So this is 4. This is 9. Uh, let's get rid of the 4. This must be a 7 with a 1 or a 2, so that's not 9 anymore. 9 has got to be in one of the... Ah, we can't put 9 on an, arrow, on, on an arrow because that will add up to at least 10, so 9 goes here. This square needs to be a 7 or an 8. Don't think we know which of those is... There might be a way of telling. I just can't see what it is. Um, these have to add up to 9, but we we know very little about the restriction. I suppose we know they can't be 4, 5, and we know it can't be 2, 7. So actually this is 3, 6, which would be this way round, or it's 1, 8, which would be 8 here, 1 here. Does that tell us? The answer is no. Um, hmm, okay. So, oh, my phone's making a big buzz at me. Um, let me just turn that, make that quiet. There we go. Um, right. Let's, so where do we look now? Are there any more? Are there any more easy arrows we can pick off? We've actually done really well with the arrows so far. Seven has got to be in one of those three squares. One, two, six, or seven here. So this is one, two, or six. One, two, three, or six. One, two, or three here. These are all one, two, or three. This square is e one, two, three, or six. That seems to work fine with this being a seven or an eight. No, I think I'm. I think I'm running out of room. Right, I'm good. I think I want to look at the purples then. Look at these squares. We know that there are two nines in the purples. So, what are the options for this square? Why have I chosen this square rather than this square? Well, it's because I'm just looking at the four and the five in row one. I know these add up to nine. So, I'm if I pick, if I try and work out which of these is a nine, I'm only able to eliminate one option from 1, 8, 2, 7, 3, 6, and 4, 5, because of these, this 4, 5. Here, I can get rid of 3, 6, and 1, 8 as two, the two possibilities. So I'm hoping, for example, this square, if this is 9, because there's a 5 here, this would have to be 2, 7, which it can be, but you can see why it's much more restricted given the givens here. So that's why I'm thinking like that. Um, so what does that mean? This can be... It's actually quite interesting. This, let's let's actually do this diligently. What can this be? It can't be three. It can't be four because that would require a one three pair, which would clash. It can't be five or six. So this has to be seven or nine. Now, if it's seven, these have to be a one six pair. And if it's nine, they have to be a two seven pair which would have to be this way round, which is possible, I think. So that's a bit strange. That's, that looked like it was going to be incredibly helpful, and then it just wasn't. What about that one? So this one, again, it can't be 3, it can't be 4. This one could be 5. Can it be 6? If it's 6, that would be a 2. And we could still put 1, 5 here, I think. My phone's going crazy. Um, I think this can be... I can't see why it can't be 6. It can be... Uh, this is not good. So this has a whole load of options. This was Bobbins, I'm afraid. Let's... <laughs> let's... Let's prove that all my instincts about solving Sudoku are wrong by looking at the top of the grid. So let's look at that square. At least I can see that sees a 6. So this can't be 4. It can't be 3. I don't actually. Can it be 3? Could that be a 1-2 pair? Oh. 
No, that's interesting. It can't be three for a complicated reason. If it was three, I'd now have used one, two, three, four, and five in the row, which would mean these two squares would have to be at least six, seven, which they can't even be, but that definitely adds up to more than nine. So we can get rid of three. We can get rid of four, five, and six. So this is seven, eight, or nine. If it's seven, this would have to be one, six. Because three, four, and two, five have gone. So that's, I might come back and look at this again. Let's see if we can get further with this one. This one can't be, it can't be three again for exactly the same reason this couldn't be three. It can't be four or five. It could be six annoyingly, I think. Oh no, it can't be six because that would need one, five or two, four. It's not six, it's not seven. This is eight or nine. So this is about the best one we've found. Ah, now maybe we can get rid of one six. Yeah, here's an interesting thing. Here's an interesting thing. This is good. If this was seven, we know this would be one six in some order. The order doesn't matter. I'm just going to put it in so we can we can look at what happens to the row. We get this arrangement. Now, what are the options for these three squares now? You can see it's three, eight, and nine. Now there is no combination of those that we can put such that this two, these two squares will add up to that one. It's not possible. So this is not seven. Now why is that interesting to me? Well, if this is not seven, whoopsie, if this is not seven, I've now got an eight, nine pair here, which means I know the value of this square. How do I know the value of this square? Well, let's think about it. If these add up to 17, I know these arrows must also add up to 17. So 17 plus 17 is 34, 4 plus 5 is 9, so let's add that on, we get 43. I know the whole row adds up to 45, so this square has to be 2, which means that's a 6, which means, I don't know what it means yet, but it means something, I'm sure. This has to be 1, 3, or 7, I think. Um, now, if that's, so whichever one of these is eight is going to have to have a one and a seven, ah, yeah, whichever one of these is eight has to have one seven with it. So if it was this one, that would be one seven, which it can't be. So this one is eight and that finishes the X wing. Now the nines must be opposite each other there. This is a one seven pair. And I think we might be starting to crack this. That's a three, six pair, therefore. This is three, this is six. We know there's a three in exactly one of those two positions. Um, now, what can we do next? We can, we can do that. Oh, the cat seems to be trying to tear up the carpet. Um, we know, ah, this is the first use of the X-Wing. The nine must be in one of those two squares. It can't go in this square because, well, it's not really a use of the X-Wing. It's a use of the nine we've placed in the grid. These two have to add up to nine. Well, they can't therefore use a six. In fact, they must be two and seven. So that goes in like that. This is now a two, five pair. The seven fixes the seven and the one at the top. That places a one in exactly this square because we know there's a one in one of these squares. Uh, this is no longer nine or seven by Sudoku, look, or six, this is five. Okay, yeah, I suppose that makes sense given we have all six digits. So this is a one, four pair, which we can't resolve. Nine is here by Sudoku. That fixes that this is two, seven, which we can do. That fixes this is one, this is three. That should be a two, unless I've made a mistake. That should be a six. Therefore, this can't be a seven. Obviously, it can't be a seven for that reason as well. It can't be a nine, so this must be a one. That's a seven, this is an eight. Therefore, that's a six. And I think, I don't want to speak too soon, but it does feel like all of a sudden we are making progress with some alacrity. Um, 
This is a 3-7 pair, so we can do that. 7 and 3 go into the grid. Oh, the cat's getting cross. Um, hang on, I'm just going to have to put the cat out of the room. One second. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hopefully, uh, hopefully there will be no more meowing. Um, where shall we look now? We shall look at... I can't remember where I was looking. Where was I? Look? Oh, down there. Okay, so let's look down here. We need... This column needs two, six, and eight. Oh, well, six has got to go there. That's the only place it can go from these sixes. Eight's got to go here. Two's got to go here. The two and the five get finished. Um, this row, look, that needs one and four in it, so we can do that. These two squares have got to be three and nine. We can do that. That's a nine now. We need to put a four and a something. A four and a seven. That's a seven. That's a four. This square should be an eight. That's a three. This box needs four and six. We know the order. This one fixes the one and the four down here. Yeah, and we're, I think we're finishing off now, aren't we? Six, two, and eight go into the grid. This box needs five and eight. We can do that. This box needs five and a four. I think that's what I'd submit. Tick. And that's how to solve Swaroop's puzzle. Absolutely loved that today. Again, it wasn't it wasn't the hardest puzzle we've ever do, but the break-in's beautiful. And the X-Wing on the nines, I don't think I needed that. But um, but anyway, it's always good to spot these things. And yeah, let me know how you got on. Let me know if you found another way in. And um, we'll, we'll be back later on with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.